This is a cannabis farm in Canada. And this is a hemp farm in the States. They look identical, don't they? The only way to distinguish the two is by testing their chemical properties. Cannabis is a genus of flowering plants. Two types of the cannabis plant are marijuana and hemp. Marijuana has a high level of tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, usually between 17 and 30 percent. This gives marijuana its psychoactive properties. It has a low level of cannabinoid, or CBD, usually around 0.15 percent. Marijuana is most known for its euphoric effects, but it can also ease glaucoma, anxiety, and pain. Hemp, on the other hand, has a low level of THC, less than 0.3 percent but a high level of CBD, usually 12 to 18%. Hemp has no psychoactive effects, but it can help with seizures, inflammation, pain, migraines, etc. Hemp plants can be traced back to 10,000 BC, particularly in the Orient, where it was spun into fiber for clothing. It's one of the fastest growing plants and is very versatile. Hemp seeds are used to make industrial products such as oil paints, varnishes, printing inks, fuel, and solvents. They also used to make soaps, shampoo, lotions, and cosmetics. The leaves are very absorbent and are used to make animal bedding, mulch, compost, and medicine. The stalk is used to make paper and cardboard packaging. It's also used to make industrial textiles such as rope, canvas, tops, and carpeting. It can be used to make clothing, handbags, denim, and shoes. And it's also used to make building materials like fiberboard, insulation, and acrylics. The roots can be used to make organic compost and even medicines that treat arthritis, joint pain, fibromyalgia, and eczema. Hemp was widely grown in the United States until the 1900s. 80% of the world's textiles and fabrics were made of hemp, and 75-90% to of all the paper made in the world was also made of hemp. However, it was made illegal under the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 and the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. So the US had to import $500 million worth of hemp every year for their products. Fortunately, hemp farming is finally legal again under the Agriculture Act of 2014 and the Farm Bill of 2018. The resurgence of industrial hemp is particularly evident in the construction industry. The most popular hemp product is hempcrete, which can be used for both construction and insulation. It's a mixture of chopped up hemp stalk or herds, lime, which acts as a binder or glue, and water. It has an R value of 2.1 per inch, so a 12 inch thick wall has an R value of about 25. A hempcrete wall has good thermal mass, so it naturally regulates the temperature and humidity inside the structure. It also resists fire, mold, and vermin, and eliminates the need for a vapor barrier and gypsum drywall. It's usually faced with natural lime plasters on the inside and the outside of the building. Another big advantage of hempcrete is that it's environmentally friendly. It's carbon negative, which means that it stores more carbon inside the plant and the walls of the building than the carbon that is needed to grow, harvest, and process it. It's a pretty flexible material to work with and it takes the shape of the form work into which it's poured so you can create curved walls. The disadvantage of hempcrete is that it's not structural or load-bearing. The building needs some form of lateral bracing, wood or timber framing, or even steel studs and a steel moment frame. It can't replace concrete because it just doesn't perform as well and it's more expensive right now. Duchamvre is a design and construction company based in Quebec, Canada, and they have turned hempcrete into an art form. Anthony and Emily convert this rough, primitive-looking material into sensual, refined forms. They take full advantage of the flexibility of the material to create curved walls in their buildings. They use both cast-in-place hempcrete and hempcrete blocks in their projects. Another hemp product that has entered the building construction industry is hemp bat insulation. 
It's an eco-friendly alternative to conventional insulation like fiberglass, mineral wool, EPS, XPS, polyiso, or spray foam. Hemp bat insulation can be used on sloped roofs, floors, ceilings, walls, and exterior facades. It's twice the price of fiberglass insulation right now, which is a turnoff. But as more companies produce similar types of this hemp insulation, I expect the price to drop. Hemp oil is another product that can replace synthetic and petroleum-based oil finishes. It is pressed from hemp seeds and can be used to stain and seal outdoor wood decks, interior wood floors, and furniture. It is food safe, so it can be used on cutting boards and utensils. It's also non-toxic and doesn't contain any VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Lastly is a new product that was created in the United States called Hemp Wood. It's a sustainable wood made from hemp fiber and soy-based adhesives by a company called Fibonacci based in Kentucky. They claim that their hemp planks are comparable to oak wood flooring, but are much more sustainable, both in production because it's an all-natural material and because hemp is rapidly renewable. Hemp stalks grow in six months compared to oak trees, which can take decades. The owners of Hempwood and Fibonacci are marketing their wood planks as hardwood, so they are putting it at the same category as real wood flooring and separating their product from cheaper laminate flooring. They also have other Hempwood products available on their website, which seems to be more like wood blocking alternatives. Legalizing the cultivation of hemp has opened up a whole new market. It's unfortunate that it's taken so long to get here, but we should appreciate the innovations in the industrial hemp sector. It's led to the creation of new products, new companies, created more jobs, and most importantly, it's a sustainable material. It can lead the building construction industry down a more eco-friendly path. That's all I have for now. If you know of any other hemp products that are shaking up the building construction industry, let me know of them in the comments below. And also thank you for the overwhelming response to the Boring Bricks video that I released last week. Uh, I'll link it up here if you haven't watched it already. Uh, until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.